Hello everyone, Mehdi Mortezavi here. Today I'm gonna talk about the Joule Thompson coefficient. Uh, so we all know that during a throttling process, the pressure of the working fluid decreases. Okay, so the topic is Joule Thompson coefficient. We all know that during a throttling process the pressure of the working fluid drops okay so let's say that we have a pipe like this and this is the direction of the flow from left to right okay so the fluid is going from left to right and here we have a throttling valve which is basically a capillary tube or very small opening so this portion is called the throttling valve which is just a very small opening so as the fluid is passing through here let's say on the left hand side is state one on the right hand side it is state two the pressure at state two is much less than the pressure than that at state one so p1 is much greater than p2 okay also we know that the throttling process is a constant enthalpy process during the throttling process enthalpy h remains constant so our h1 is equal to h2 so the reason behind this is by applying the conservation of energy we will see that the only term that we have on the left hand side is the energy entering into the throttling valve th uh, throttling valve through mass and on the right hand side the only form of energy that leaves the valve is again in forms of mass and there is only enthalpy H that is within that uh, conservation of energy equation. Now, the question is what happens to the temperature? From the refrigeration cycle discussion, we all know that the temperature also drops and that is basically the basis of utilizing uh, throttling valve or capillary tube in air conditioning system. So let me just write it down. In air conditioning, Shining systems throttling valves are used to decrease the temperature of the refrigerant so basically as the refrigerant passes through the uh, throttling valve its temperature drops and that is why they are using that in air conditioning system but the question is does temperature always drop as the working fluid passes through the uh, throttling valve question does temperature of the working fluid always drop as it passes through the throttling valve so the answer to this question is no it is not like always the temperature drops as it passes through the throttling valve there may be some condition that as the working fluid is passing through the valve its pressure definitely drops but its temperature is increasing even there are some cases that the temperature doesn't really change so as p drops three different scenarios may happen to the temperature the temperature may drop and that is exactly what we are doing in air conditioning system that temperature may stay constant with no change also that temperature may even increase 
okay? Now, the behavior of temperature during a throttling process is described by the Joule-Thomson coefficient, which is the title of today's lecture. So the behavior of temperature, I'm sorry, you guys cannot see that. So the behavior of temperature during a throttling process is described by the Joule Thomson coefficient. Okay, so we show this coefficient by mu, and mu is equal to partial t partial p when the pressure is uh, when I'm sorry when enthalpy h is constant. The change of temperature with respect to uh, pressure when the enthalpy is constant. Okay, so basically. One thing I can write, I can say that the Joule Thomson coefficient is a measure of the changes in T and T being temperature with P during a constant enthalpy process. So the fact that we write down H as a subscript tells us that the, the, the enthalpy remains constant during the process. So this mu value can have three different uh, signs basically. Okay, the mu JT, so I also add a JT standing for Joule Thompson, makes it easier to follow and we don't really confuse that with viscosity that you have in your fluids. So the Joule Thompson coefficient can be positive and if the uh, coefficient is positive, I would say the temperature drops because basically the pressure is always dropping during the throttling process. So P2 is always less than P1. If we want to end up with a positive value at the end, a positive ratio, the temperature should also drop so that we end up with a positive Joule-Thomson coefficient. So in this case, if the Joule-Thomson coefficient is positive, we would say the temperature drops. If the Joule-Thomson coefficient is equal to zero, then technically that means there is no change in temperature. No change in temperature. Finally, the Joule-Thomson coefficient can be negative. If the Joule-Thomson coefficient is negative, and by saying that, by knowing that the pressure is uh, decreasing, so basically this partial P is a negative value, then because of that, the temperature should increase, should uh, increase to end up with a positive nominator, a negative denominator, and a negative total ratio. So here, in this case, when the Joule-Thomson coefficient is negative, the temperature increases. Okay? So the Joule-Thomson coefficient basically represents the slope of an H constant line on a diagram that shows temperature versus pressure. So let me just write this down. The JT or Joule-Thomson coefficient represents the 
slope of the h constant line on a tp diagram so in a tp diagram temperature is the vertical axis and pressure p is the horizontal axis so let's say if i have a diagram like this on this diagram i can show constant uh, enthalpy curves so if i show the constant enthalpy curves they will look something like this okay so each of these lines have a constant h value so let's say the h value or the enthalpy value is constant throughout this line same thing here h value is constant obviously these two h values are different from each other but for each line that h value is constant now if you notice there is one point on any of these uh, curves that the slope is zero so i added another h constant line so there is one one point that in any of these uh, h constant curves that the slope is zero okay so for instance here this point has zero slope by saying zero slope i simply mean if you draw a tangent line that tangent line is basically the horizontal line at this point also at this point at this point okay so let me just write it as a bullet item there is one zero slope point on each h constant line okay so the line that connects all those zero slope lines is called the inversion line the line that connects all those zero slope points is called the inversion line so basically me by just connecting all these zero slope points I'm making that inversion line okay so the red line is in fact my inversion line okay so these temperature so the vertical axis is representing the temperature right these temperature that the, the inversion line meets the vertical axis is called the maximum inversion temperature so this point or this temperature is called the maximum inversion temperature okay now this inversion line makes two sides uh, um, splits these plot into two sides on the right hand side here let's say the joule thompson coefficient is negative basically okay by saying negative joule thompson coefficient i simply mean during the throttling process the temperature increases and i'm talking about this portion of the plot i'm talking about any portion of the plot on the right side of the red line okay so the reason that i say that the temperature increases during the throttling process is because during the throttling process the pressure drops that means if i start from point one and if my working fluid undergoes a throttling process from one to two which is the end of the throttling process the, the pressure should drop okay because that's a throttling process and always in throttling process always the pressure drops and don't forget that pressure here is the horizontal axis all right but look what happens to temperature which is the vertical axis from one to two the temperature is increasing from one to two okay so that's why we say on the right side of these red line 
the temperature increases during the throttling process. Okay, I'm just talking about the throttling process in this discussion. Now, if V and V, let's say, let me make another TP plot. Let's say this is my H constant line. Let's say right now, point one is the beginning of the throttling process and point two is the end of the throttling process. So you would see that the temperature, uh, I'm sorry, the pressure is definitely decreasing from one to two because pressure is the horizontal axis, but the temperature doesn't really change, okay? So in this particular case, the temperature didn't really change. But if we are discussing about the left side of the dome, uh, not dome, the left side of the red line, let's say from going from point three to point four, as we go from point three to point four, as the pressure drops from three to four, the temperature also drops, okay? So that's why on the left side of the red line, we will have a drop in temperature. And on the left side, the Joule-Thomson coefficient is positive. So Joule-Thomson coefficient is positive on the left side, all right? So, I can just write it as a bullet item. So the bullet item reads Mu Joule Thompson is a positive value in the left side of the inversion line. And the inversion line is the red line that we have here. Likewise, Mu Joule Thompson is a negative is negative in the right side of the inversion line. Okay? So the throttling process is always always within the direction of decreasing the pressure. Okay. The throttling process is always in the direction of decreasing The pressure now the question is at what points uh, the temperature of the fluid increases during the throttling process so this is not a new question I already mentioned that but let me just write this down the question is at what points the temperature of the fluid increases during a throttling process. So the answer is at points on the right side of the inversion line, uh, the temperature increases during a throttling process because during a throttling process, we go to the left, we start from the right side, or we start from any point here, but we go to the left. At points on the right side of the inversion line. Okay, so the other point is the cooling effect cannot be achieved by throttling unless the fluid is uh, below its maximum inversion temperature. So let me show that on a TP plot. So let's say temperature is vertical axis, pressure is the horizontal axis, and we have 
bunch of edge constant lines okay and let's say this is our inversion line so the red line is our inversion line okay so this is the inversion line and this point here is called obviously the maximum inversion temperature so if I draw another constant enthalpy line let's say something like this then this constant enthalpy line doesn't really reach to this point I mean the inversion temperature on this line is beyond this red line beyond the inversion line so because of that even this line is a constant enthalpy line this never gives us a cooling effect so the bullet item is the cooling effect cannot be achieved by throttling unless the fluid is below its maximum inversion temperature okay so let's do one example about the uh, joule thompson coefficient <laughs> 